Hi, my name is Vincent O'Sullivan. I'm with the Heritage in School Scheme and I'm going to bring you on a trip today that I normally bring schools on. It's, we're here based on Cullihill Mountain. This is where it starts generally. This is a, a mass path here, leads up onto the mountain and that's where we'll be starting today. As we walk up the path through the hazels, uh, nearby is a waterfall, it's called the Common Waterfall. It's a really lovely feature on the mountain. The water, as it flows down, come, goes through shale, the local rock, leaving a kind of a layered effect, which looks really well. And generally, beside, the growth beside the waterfall is, and throughout the mountain is, is a, a wild grass called wood rush, which dominates mainly the undergrowth. We're here at the Cummer Well, you can see it here behind me. It's a, an ancient well used by the people on the mountain for centuries. It uh, was good, really good quality water that people used it for drinking tea mainly. There's other wells they used for washing and that kind of thing, but this was renowned for its quality. It was important in a sense that the people that collected the water were mainly women and they would meet here regularly and have a chat about what was happening locally and that kind of thing. Um, but carrying the water back, usually they, they have two buckets to carry back, was torturous work, especially if it was a long distance. But the well was a very important part of society back then. Next we have another historical site. This is called a monument bush. It refers to Cullihill Castle. Cullihill Castle was built in 1425 by the McGillipaudricks or Fitzpatricks, who were lords of Upper Austria at the time. In 1650, Oliver Cromwell invaded Ireland, and sometime around that time, his soldiers attacked Cullihill Castle, leaving it in ruins. Cormac McGillipaudrick, one of the lords, was escaped but was captured on the mountain here and was slain. He was buried at this site. Locals planted uh, a white thorn tree over his grave. The remains of it is there. They created this stone structure around the tree as a, a, a monument to him. The significant part is, is it, this structure is in line with the castle below. While there's lots of history on the mountain, nature dominates. It's springtime, middle of April, and the weather is quite warm for the time of year. You see lots of wildflowers starting to appear. You have celandine and other flowers, the violet, and I suppose uh, forest bushes with a blossom on it. It's a really lovely aroma. Uh, leaves at the moment coming out, you have hazel, white thorn, and you have the blossom on the black thorn. Others, I suppose, would be the frocken bush. Frocken, that would be blueberry, a wild form of blueberry. It, it's starting to, uh, berries and that are starting to appear. It's just a wonderful time and it's just a wonderful unspoiled area. I'm standing with um, a ring fort or a rath behind me and two white thorn bushes. You can see them there growing from the side of it. Um, a ring fort or a rath date back to St. Patrick's time and they were first of the farm homesteads at the time. Uh, there were generally circular areas with fence, palisade fence around them which would contain farm animals and people lived in them, just mainly families. This particular rath is up very high so it was probably not lived on. It was a defensive rath and Maybe used in ceremonial, ceremonial times for burials or for christening, that kind of thing. Um, the other main feature on this particular rat was probably that it, it could warn other people in rats down in the lowlands if there was an enemy coming or whatever, by way of smoke signals, which was typical of the time. The other interesting thing about rats would be sometimes they're referred to as fairy forts where the little people were part of the folklore of rats. Um, I haven't heard anything about little people up here on the mountain, but people tell me that 
in the past there used to be hurling games on a summer's night or sometimes under moonlight. That's part of the folklore of the mountain. This area behind me here, a hollowed out area up here on Cullihill Mountain, is to do with a legend on the mountain. Uh, it refers to Fionn McCool and the devil who had a fight at the Devil's Spit in Tipperary. Uh, some say that the fight went on for three days, but eventually Fionn McCool escaped and arrived over here on the mountain on a horse. And he's alleged to have slept there, slept in this hollow for two nights and he tied his horse to the tree over beyond. That's, that's really the legend of Fiumacool on Cullihill Mount. An unusual feature on the mountain are the walls. Uh, it's just like a small part of Connemara. The stone walls uh, signify um, from the fields from the past, I suppose, when they're really small and numerous farmers own them. Um, they're really a valuable resource to hold on to. They're valuable also for the flora and fauna in the area and they're part of our culture. I'm standing in the ruins of a pre-famine farmhouse. We're in the kitchen. You see behind me here the fireplace, uh, flags on the floor, that was standard of the time. And the next door is uh, the bedroom. And in the bedroom you have a back-to-back -back fireplace, so it's just one chimney. And on the roof you would have had a um, thatched, thatched, thatched house, it would be thatched roof. That's really it, it was, it was fairly basic for the time, and that's all people had, and they were happy at the time. Uh, this is an area where we bring the children in, um, usually to take a photograph at this point. But um, I just point out to them the stone structure that's behind me here and the way the trees can grow on such a barren area. You can see the roots over the rocks there going down into the earth. Um, this, in the 70s, this was just uh, firs and brambles and that kind of thing, and it was planted then. And that these trees are that age at this stage. Um, it's just a nice area to visit. During the visit we cover history, geography and science. But more importantly it's a great day out for everybody, both children and for adults, in a totally natural environment. And if you're lucky on the way you might see some local wildlife.